good morning and thank you for having us. Well, it's, it's clear that it's, a, like you said, very uncertain times. Um, we, we have some countries which are uh, already at the end of the interrate cycle, particularly Latin America. So the outlook there is much clearer. It's more uncertain in Europe. But uh, we are very well positioned, given our model and our uh, diversification, we are very well positioned to weather any um, uncertainties or uh, any pressures that we might feel in the coming months. I'm glad that you raised the issue of Latin America because you have been trying to expand into emerging economies, particularly in areas like uh, Central and South America, to try and get some growth out uh, compared to uh, what's going on here in Europe. But I see here that you've dropped out of the process to buy Citigroup's Mexican retail bank. Where else? Will you be looking in emerging markets to try and get that greater growth? Well, we are present in, in all uh, economies uh, in Latin America. In Mexico in particular, we have a very strong presence. We've been uh, gaining market share and we plan to continue to gain market share in the coming years. Uh, just to give you an idea, we have started doing auto finance in the last uh, three years ago and we already have 14% of the market. Another very important market for us is Brazil that despite uh, the higher interest rates and, and higher inflation, we earn in the first half of the year a return on equity of 21.5%. Yeah, some really big rates there as well. How bad are the return on tangible equity in Europe compared though, Jose? Well, in Europe for the first time, we are very close to uh, cost of capital for the first time in the last few years. Uh, we benefited from higher rates in Poland and in the UK not so much in, in the rest of Europe, because obviously rates are, are, are rate hikes are, are behind. But we saw very strong demand, very strong demand for mortgages in the UK, for mortgages in Spain. So we saw you know, very strong activity in the second uh, quarter of the year, and that helped push up our return on equity to close to cost of capital. That's an extraordinary situation that we're in, Jose, for the European banking sector struggling to actually match its cost of capital as well. What I'm worried about, though, and what a lot of people are worried about is as we get higher rates or get back to zero, at least from the ECB as well, uh, delinquencies are going to wipe out some of the profitability that could uh, be incurred from those higher rates as well. The delinquencies I noted did come in uh, at only 3.05 percent for the bad loan ratio at the end of June. Uh, how, is it getting worse, Jose? Well, the only country where we, we've seen a slight deterioration in asset quality is actually Brazil. Uh, in the rest of the countries, um, asset quality is improving. We have a very secure portfolio. 70% uh, more or less of our portfolio is secured uh, with, with uh, house guarantees or auto guarantees. And 75% of our portfolios is in, in developed economies. So the, the key variable here to measure asset quality in Europe in the coming months, the key is going to be unemployment. And it looks like even if we face a slower growth in uh, the economies, uh, unemployment is not going to happen. We are going to see a very strong employment labor market. And that is the key variable to judge future asset quality. So we don't see much asset quality deterioration in the coming quarters.